Hi, and welcome to Exodronical. In this episode, we're going to look at connecting an ESP32 up to one of these RLI9341 displays using the TFT underscore ESPI driver. Let's get cracking. Is that it? <sighs> so this is one of the available examples with the TFT underscore ESPI driver. It's an absolute plethora of examples. Amazing driver library. Usually, I use a lot of Adafruit driver libraries for displays. But this one, and I'll put its name on screen now, is called the TFT underscore ESPI driver and it is excellent. And the amount of examples is just tremendous. We will also be looking at how to use the display with an SD card as a built-in built -in SD card reader on the back and how to use the touchscreen. All these are supported by this library that I'm showing you today. So first things first, let's look at how we wire up this display to the ESP32. So here we go, blank board. You'll notice certainly on my version of this board, there is no silt screen identifying the pin connections on the top of the board. That would have been really handy. I've actually not seen any with that on, but presumably there are somewhere. Anyway, for your convenience, I'm gonna put the connections across the top of the screen now. You'll also find these on my website, linked to the project page for this display down on the screen now as well. So you'll find that, print it out, or just refer to it to make it easy when you're connecting up, because it's a right pain in the butt to work out which connections where when you're trying to count down you've got to reverse oh it's just a pain so anyway for your convenience those are the connections so let's make a start first one voltage two vcc ground two ground next one i'm going to do is the led led and connecting to the vcc the mossy mosey whatever the blue wire is going to pin 23 standard spi hardware connection for the sp32 the clock, SEK, the yellow wire goes to pin 18. And the green wire, chip select, goes to pin 15. The reset, the white wire, is going to pin 4. The data connection, the DC, the pink wire, is going to pin 2. Notice that we haven't connected up the MISO. MISO is the connection when you want to get data back from something. We don't need any data back from this display. So, I've left it unconnected. So let's have a look at what libraries we need. So if you go up to Tools, Manage Libraries, and type in TFT underscore ESPI. And the one you want is this one here. It says by Bodma. I'll click Install and close that window. So by default, this library is actually designed to work with the ALI 9341. It will work with several other screens as well and you have to make a few adjustments in a header file if you wanted to work with other screens. You also need to make some adjustments for whatever microcontroller you're using. We're using the SP32 so we just need to make some changes in the header file for that. It's just a matter of uncommenting some lines and I'll show you that now. So I'm going to File, Preferences, will get you your sketchbook location. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy that out of there, close that down, open a file a window, put my mouse in there, paste that in, and I've got my sketch folder. You can see some of the things I've worked on in the last few weeks. Double click on libraries, and in there you'll find the many libraries that you've already installed perhaps, you can see some of the ones I've had, and then also, you'll find this TFT underscore ESPI that we've just installed. So let's open up that folder. And then the important file is usersetup.h here. You want to be opening that in an editor of your choice. Just a simple plain text editor. So I'll click edit. And that opens in notepad for me. And if you look down here, it talks about different processors. And I'll just go a little bit further down. Also, you can see that by default, it's set for the ILI 9341 driver. And then you can see all these other screens that are supported. So if you're using one of these other screens, and I'll come back to this software when I use one of these other screens as well and show you. But basically, all you need to do, you need to comment out the 9341 and comment in 
the whatever, let's say the ST7735, is that what you, if that's what you're using. However, you're probably watching this video because in the title it says we're going to go with the 9341's display. So we're leaving that as it is. And then scrolling down, bring this into view, you can see it says pin numbers, definitions for the ESP32 setup. You can see what we need to do is to release these into the wild. For all those. And also, just further up here, you will find that the CS we've already got some default ones in there which we can just uncomment for CS, for chip select, DC, data control and reset. We're just going to uncomment these for the ESP32 here. So I'll save that, close that down and we'll bring up an example. So examples down to the bottom TFT ESPI and this is where you can see there are an awful lot of demos in here for various things even an e-paper demo there we've got a three, the 9341 supports 320 by 240 pixel board that's what I'm going to go in for these demos and the demo you saw at the beginning is the meters example here although there's an awful lot you could try out here just for fun see what they look like i'll bring that in maximize that and nobody you need to do now is do a compile and upload and there we go i'll bring the display on the screen you can see and it's worth looking up the github page for this i'll put a link in the description below that explains about a lot more about what's happening here. In fact, you'll find the latest version of this driver on the GitHub page, which is actually newer than the one you'll get in the Arduino's library manager. So if you're interested in getting the latest stuff, bugs, fixes, and extra facilities, then I suggest you go onto the GitHub. You just need to install it as a zip file. So that's that. Let's now move on to displaying an image from the SD card. And looking on the back of the board, you can see the connections for chip select, MOSI, MISO, and clock. Just solder a pin header on there, and you're away. So coming from left to right, we have the green wire, which is the chip select, and that goes down to pin 5 on the ESP32. We then have the blue wire, which is uh, MOSI, and that goes down to our normal pin 23 which I've already connected to for the screen as well. And then the next one we have is the purple wire, which is my soul, which goes down to pin 19. And the last one is the yellow wire, which is the clock, and that goes down to pin 18. All done. Now let's have a look at the software. So we're going to look at displaying JPEG images on the screen, just to check make sure the SD card is working. What you'll need is a JPEG decoder library and the one you'll want is, go to tools and manage libraries again. It's exciting isn't it? And type in JPEG JPEG decoder and the one you'll want is this one in the middle here by Bodmer and the rest of those people whose names I probably wouldn't be very confident at pronouncing. So make sure you install that and then you've got a couple of options. There is a demo which I'll show you now. So examples in the TFT library. So we go down here. Come on, so many libraries in there. And now where was it? In generic and then ESP32 SD card JPEG. I'll open that up. I'm not going to use it, but I'll open it up. And what this does, you need to put some images on your SD card. The images you will find if you look in, so you need to go to the libraries folder, which I showed you earlier, go to the JPEG decoder that you'll folder that you'll find in the libraries folder. 
into folder called extras and you'll find all the images that this program uses in there because they need to be those exact images named exactly as they need to, uh, named exactly as they are when you look at them because here we go it'll be calling them up and trying to display them from your SD card under those exact names so what I did is I wrote a little slightly different version of that I based mine on it so you'll see a lot of Bodmer's description at, at the top there as well as my own little modified additional header there and basically what mine does my software does is it just scans your root of your SD card for any files in fact any files so they do need to be just JPEGs as it's going to get itself in a tiz so make sure you've just got JPEG files in the root of that for this demo and it will look through your root and the file it finds it will actually display it so it means you're flexible you can just chuck your own images on there also the other Bodmer example the other example from the TFT ESPI library had them set at, I think it was 480 by 320 or 360 or something like that which is a wrong pixel size the wrong resolution for this particular screen which is 320 by 240 so my images are all 320 by 240 images that I've created don't try and put big JPEGs on there you're just going to get a massively zoomed in section this software as far as I'm aware this JPEG decoder software will not scale it to your screen it's not that clever if there is a scale option I haven't really looked in depth I doubt there will, will be because that would take some, you know, some computational power which is on a little microcontroller even one as powerful as the amazing ESP32 you're not probably going to get that please write in the comments if I'm actually wrong and it does scale them and it's fairly fast but I think I'm right so if you go onto my website you'll find and the link's on screen now and there'll be a link in the description below if you go to there you'll find this software this sketch that I've written along with the folder of images that I'm going to display for you now in the correct resolution you just need to whack it onto your SD card so let's look at the demo running on my screen and that can pop into there in fact it goes in upside down kind of thing into the slot there so let's just zoom in and we'll power up so mountain shot amazing looking tiger astronaut on outside the ISS ah cute kittens what would you what would the internet be without them and of course obligatory pretty girl and back to the beginning so next thing let's get the touchscreen working so if we just look at the wiring first have a look at the understanding of the board it shows for the touchscreen it's got five main connections for us using this library we don't need to use that top one IRQ we can ignore it it's not going to be connected the next one DO not to be confused D0 it's basically data out is data that's going to go back from the touch controller to the SP32 to your microcontroller the DIN is data in so we're going to send information to the touch controller over that connection and then CS chip select and clock so let's have a look at what they look like on the board so starting with the data out that actually connects via this purple wire to the MISO which is the SPI input pin I can see it's shared with the other MISO connection for the SD card the SPI bus can be used by many peripherals which one's using it at any given time is determined by that chip select connection so only one device will ever be using it depending on whether it's been enabled via that chip select so the next one along is then DIN data into the screen so MOSI is the one where we send information from the SP32 to whatever so that if you look is connected with this blue wire coming around onto the MOSI connection of the screen I could have connected that to any point where my MOSI was so I've got one coming down from the top of the board from the SD card as well I could have sort of looped over the wires that way but for me it looked the most convenient just to put it right at the bottom there and connect onto the MOSI connection of the actual TFT screen 
The next one is chip select, and that has to be unique. Every device in the SPI bus has to have its own chip select line. And we've just got, I think, one connection left along this top or this side of the SP32, which is connection pin 21. And luckily, the driver software that we're using wants to see the touchscreen on pin 21. If you were to use a different pin, then you can change it in that setup.h file that we looked at earlier. But stick with 21 and everything's gonna work straight out of the box. And the last one is clock. So then again, we've got a little jumper going from the clock connection, jumping onto where the clock connection is for the screen as well. As I say, that is a shared bus. MISO, Mozzie and clock can all be shared by all peripherals. So that's the wiring done. Let's have a look at some software to demo it. Okay, there are no additional libraries to download. So all you need to do is go to the examples that we've been to already. So let's just pop down here to where the TFTC ESPI is. Whoops. And if you go into generic, I'm going to choose this on off button. So load up that. And what I'm going to do, just to make it a little bit uh, more interesting, there's basically a button going to appear on screen with an on and an off side to it. You press the on and it'll just highlight it in on. So let's just do a little bit more than that. Let's have an LED lighting up when we press the on button. So we just come down here and in the setup we're going to put, I'm going to set pin mode, pin mode for our pin 27 to output. Whoops, whoops again. And then going down into the loop, we're going to just whack a line in here to turn it on and off as we need. 27. I just copy that line down to here but set it to true there. So apart from that, the code's going to be identical to the actual example code. This is just so we have something a little bit more visual to show. So let's upload that and have a look at it in action. Okay, so let's power it up. And the first thing you're going to see is actually calibration. It says touch corners is indicated. We need to calibrate the SP32 so it knows exactly where you're pressing. This only needs to be done once. Once you've done it, it'll be stored in the SP32's permanent memory. So even when you take the power off and unplug the SP32, it will actually remember that. So plug it in again and you won't see this screen again. So it'll be calibrated just the once. So I'm using my chunky fingers. You could use one of those little stylus pens, but chunky fingers will do me. So that corner, that corner, that corner, and that corner, then straight into the, the demo. So as we've coded it, when we press the on, we should see this LED here connected to pin 27, come on. And there we go, on, off, on, off, on, off. Honestly, I could do this for seconds before getting bored. It's not a problem. There we go. So simple demonstration, how you can control real world objects using your touch screen. So, that's all for now. As a summary, in this episode, you've learned how to actually wire up and write to this touchscreen. You've learned how to use the SD card and read images off it and display them onto screen. And you've also learned how to use the touchscreen facilities of these ILI9341 TFTs using the TFT underscore ESP32 library. So I hope this has been a really useful episode. If you liked it, give it a little thumbs up. If you'd like to see some more, hit the old subscribe button down below. And thanks very much to my patrons. And thank you very much for watching. Till next time.